Hello, my name is Johannes Adam. Let me show you our latest version of an electric thermal simulator for printed boards called TRM3. Most important, it has a brand new interface to Altium Designer and that's what I want to show you now. How does it work? This is one of the example boards in Altium. It's a two-layer board, very simple but complete. And let's assume that we are interested in the temperature created by some power or test power in component U1 and the trace heating in a long net, for example, 5 volt net, from here to here. What I could do now is to export and add all this physics features or parameters in TRM, but I can use the schematics to uh, create or to fill parameters in, in Altio. So first of all, let's have a look at the component. The schematics is FGPA and after selection, double click parameters. We see here a new parameter called TRM minus power and the value 1 indicates it's a 1 watt power value. It can be changed here and uh, if we say 1 watt we take 1 watt. Parameters also creates an annotation. What about the current? We can start here in the power schematics. The connector S1 got a parameter called minus 2 amp and where it is attached of course in the 5 volt net pad or connector number 2. 2 colon minus 2 amp is defining a 2 amp sink here. We have to have a create a counterpart plus 2 amp to, to balance the flux of electricity and that's done in the LCD schematic. You see 2 and plus 2 amp. This is a parameter in the LCD component plus 2 amp. Yeah. It's also possible to assign volts, plus or minus volts or plus or minus amps. If we use two amp parameters, then the sum of amps must be zero. That's all. And we start the export procedure. It will create Gerber files, etc. and a bill of materials containing the parameters. The files are somewhere in a depot. Let's open TRM and I start the import wizard. New project automatic. It's reading everything. There's also a manual mode where you can select just Gerber, just Bomb. As a default material we take a low cost FR4. It's part of the material database. We assume a thermal pixel size or resolution of 0.1 millimeters. That depends how close you want to look into details. Uh, one of our traces is very narrow, which means 0.1 is appropriate. The plating Though the ring plating is uh, assumed to be 25 microns. All table start import. I have to create a project name or a project. And everything is running in an automatic mode. It's reading files and creating other files. What did we get from the import? We see components, we see a block of printed board. The components are 
quite high. That's because the distance between the, the layers is so small. Let me deselect the components. We see top layer, we see bottom layer. We see the drills, the, the plated holes. There are some non-plated holes in black. And we can use a transparent mode to view through the components. And it's possible to identify individuals. This is LCD1. This is our um, connector. This is U1 having one watt from the schematics. Now let me go from left to right, menu by menu. This is the size of the board. This is the layer stack with thickness and Gerber file. View allows to see what's imported. We have a table with drill files, separated, plated and non-plated, through hole and buried or blind vias if available. We can view the import from the drill file. Each drill is listed in a drills table and each hole can be modified here say we change the plating, we change plated, non-plated, we delete. This values will override the default values given in the drill file table. We have a mounting or assembling preparation consisting of an IDF file and a special Altium file. The IDF file is reading the positions and the size of the components and the Altium data file is reading the list of materials, which means the amps and the watts we specified in the schematics. This is just a preparation. The important information is listed in a loads table. We see the individual components and at the end of this list, we see a list of pads. Consist of the name has the net name, the component name, and the number or the, the string for the connector. Let's, let's look for our input values. We are looking for what? Not equal zero. And it will give us U1. U1 is also available here in the property sheet. One watt. It's possible to modify components here, create new ones, and parameterize them. Where are the umps? We have set minus 2 on pad number 2 in connector S1 and plus 2 amps in LCD. Here we have the boundary condition minus 2 amp. How can we find the position of this one? It's simple. We just change the value of the dimension and see that this is the position going back to the original value. There are much more interactions and ways to change the model. Now we are ready to calculate. First of all, we have to know what are the ambient conditions, say what is the ambient air temperature, and what is the so-called heat transfer coefficient. The heat transfer coefficient can be estimated or calculated using this tiny assistant. The recommended value for a 20 degree ambient and a 1 watt 
this heat dissipation is more or less 10 and I'm replacing the default value 12, 12 by the value of 10. We calculate the current or to be precise the field of the electric potential. From the potential we derive the current density, from the current density we, we derive the local joule heating in each point of the trace. This power is then accumulated with the power from the components to a total power point per point and this will create a temperature. I'm starting the calculation. It will read the data created by the interfaces and we see the potential iteration loop starting. It converged quite fast. It's creating 0.8 watts of joule heating in the trace. The next step is the temperature loop, which will take a little bit more time because it has to take into account all the points in the 3D volume. Meanwhile, we can watch the results. It's a map of the voltage or the potential to be precise. The minimum voltage here at the minus 2 amp situa um, situation and we have the highest potential value in the plus 2 amp point. How does the current come from here to here? Of course by changing layers and a connection in the bottom layer. The derived current density map can be seen here. We also see the direction of the current. It's of course from plus to minus potential. Let's have a look what the temperature loop is doing. And then we will watch the three-dimensional view of the current and the potential distribution. The temperature is done. It is showing us a maximum temperature of 48 degree and we have a total power creation of 1.8 watts, 0.8 from the electric power and 1 watt from power of U1. The theorem of energy conservation is uh, completely fulfilled. We have a power input of 1.856 watts and we have a power loss leaving from the surfaces of minus 1.856 watts giving a 100% quality of the temperature result. Let's go back to the result view. This is the temperature map on the top surface of the PCB. This is component temperature. This is top layer temperature. If we select top layer, we are the, co the components are transparent. This is what happens underneath the component in layer one. This is the situation in the dielectric. And this is the situation, the bottom layer. Watch the excessive heating in this part of the trace. It's double heated. It's heated by the component and it's heated by its own current. You can also watch the heat flux vector, which is interesting sometimes. We see that the heat is flowing along the copper traces, of course, away from the hot spot, and we see that some when the heat flux is very low. This of course is also visible in the temperature map. There's a sharp transition between green and blue. And why is that? That's because of the distribution of copper and non-copper. This is a barrier for the heat. Same here. We have a heat flux in the corners and this is also visible a little bit here 
and it's visible in the heat flux vector. Let's have a look in the 3D display of the of the results. I'm importing the temperature. Most of the time this is a boring picture, but we can see a 3D impression of the results. More interesting is our voltage distribution or potential distribution. where we see the voltage drop from a high value to a low value and how the layers are connected with drilled holes. And same with current density. Low current density in the white traces and high current density in the, in the tiny traces. Uh, also, together with the drills, we have a three-dimensional impression what's going on here. We have a report file telling us details by numbers. And finally, we have a, a classic view from the previous TRM version where you can select your own min-max values. And funny enough, we have a palette which is very close to what you are used from infrared cameras. It has a, another color bar. There are many, many more options and ways to create a model and to modify a model, but that's not part of this introductory video. Thank you for watching and stay tuned.